Hi everyone, oh, so good to see you. Happy November. Today we're gonna to be reading an extra special book called We Gather Together, celebrating the harvest season. Ooh. Gonna be a very, uh, a very interesting, very informative. That means it has a lot of information type of book. So let's do it together, okay. We go. During early autumn in the northern part of the earth, chipmunks pack their cheeks full of seeds to store in underground burrows. Red fox pups hunt for rodents and fruit to eat, then bury leftovers to dig up when food is scarce. Beavers store twigs and sticks underwater to chew when ice covers their pond. Ooh, look at those beautiful foxes and beavers. I love it. As the sun appears lower in the southern sky each day, the sun rises later each morning and sets earlier each evening. Days grow shorter, the nights grow cooler, and the growing season ends. It's time to prepare for winter. Black bears gobble honey, grubs, fruit, and roots building layers of fat for the cold days ahead. Just so you know, grubs are worms, so bears eat worms. Not exactly what you thought a bear would eat, right? Thought there would be more, uh, more humans in there. <laughs> People pick purple grapes, yellow squash, orange pumpkins, and crisp red apples. They husk corn, gather nuts, rake cranberries, and enjoy the harvest season. But today, there is little need for them to stockpile food for winter as the animals do. Ships, trucks, and cargo planes transport it from parts of the world where fruits and vegetables are still growing. When it's winter in the Northern Hemisphere, food is brought in from the Southern Hemisphere where it's summer. That's pretty cool, huh? Ooh, so this is a picture of how the Earth moves around the sun and the different amounts of darkness we get during the year. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Okay. Different seasons are caused by the tilt of the earth as it moves around the sun. When the northern part of the earth tilts toward the sun, the north gets lots of sunshine and it's summer there. When the northern part of the earth tilts away from the sun, the north gets less sunshine and it's winter. Between summer and winter, around September 21st, the sun crosses the equator and shines equally on both sides, on both the northern and southern parts of the earth. On that day in the northern part of the world, summer ends and autumn begins. Day and night have equal hours all over the world. For many, the autumnal equinox signals a time to harvest crops. That's the day when it's equal on both sides. Each crop has its own growing season. Most seedlings sprout with the cool spring rain and thrive under the warm summer sun. Sunshine helps a plant's leaves make the food that is necessary for the plant to grow. When autumn arrives, days are cooler. Plants can no longer make the food they need and the growing season ends. Time to gather in the crops. Fruits and vegetables that ripen by autumn must be harvested before winter's freezing weather destroys them. Beautiful, all the plants growing. <laughs> 300,000 years ago, no one knew how to plant seeds to produce a bountiful harvest. Cave dwellers picked berries, collected nuts, dug roots, and gathered wild plants. Winters were hard for them. They had to live on what they gathered and stored in the fall. Well, they look kind of like us though, right? 300,000 years ago. <laughs> About 10,000 years ago, where Syria and Turkey are today, tribes learned to grow wheat and barley from seeds. How exciting it must have been to plant one seed and produce a stock with many. Wow. 8,000 years ago in Egypt, people discovered the warm climate was perfect for farming. The Nile River was, provided water, and once each year, its floodwaters deposited rich, black, fertile soil on both sides. 
plants grow in abundance. Beautiful. <laughs> and really cool, that's where all of our farming comes from. Gradually, farming spread to Asia. About 5,000 years ago, people grew food in a crescent-shaped area where Iraq is now. The Tigris River and, the, and small streams that fed it turned valleys into a fertile crescent of rich farmlands. Oh, goodness. Each autumn in many lands, men, women, and children worked all day and even at night under the light of the bright harvest moon. They cut rice, threshed wheat, and gathered bundles of barley. A good harvest meant plenty of food to eat in the fall and more to store for days when food was scarce. Time to rejoice and have fun after the hard backbreaking work. Over the centuries, people celebrated plentiful harvests and passed down traditions at different times, in different places, and in different ways. All over the world, harvest celebrations from the past are still being carried on today. Jewish families have gathered together at harvest time for over 3,000 years to celebrate Sukkot. During this eight-day festival of Thanksgiving, they wave palm, myrtle, and willow branches and point them in all directions to show that God is everywhere. Some Jews, Jew, Jews sorry, build a hut called a sukkah, like the ones farmers once stayed in to be near their crops during a busy harvest. They decorate, the, they decorate the huts with fruits and vegetables that invite friends and family to share food and friendship. People in Southern India have celebrated Pongal, a four day rice festival for over 2000 years. On the first day, they decorate their front doors with rice flower designs and give thanks to the rain gods. On the second day, they cook Pongal, a sweet rice pudding and offer some to the sun god. On the third day, they honor their cattle to thank them for pulling the plows. The fourth day, family and friends gather on riverbanks, dance and enjoy a bountiful feast, including, of course, freshly harvested rice. The people of Japan have held rice festivals for about 2,000 years. In spring, girls dressed in kimonos plant rice while musicians play bells, drums, and flutes. In summer, they hold a lantern festival to express their joy as the rice ripens. When the fall comes, they celebrate the rice harvest with parades and a dragon dance. During their moon viewing ceremony, people sing while watching shadows of, on the full moon. Many think the shadows show a rabbit making rice cakes. Rabbit making rice cakes, I love that. For over 700 years, Nigerians have held a fall festival to give thanks for yams, the first crop harvested. On the night, on the night before the festivities begin, the old wrinkled yams are thrown out. The next day, new yams are offered to the gods and ancestors in appreciation of a successful harvest. Dancers wear raffia skirts and masks that portray turtles, lizards, trees, and the sun or moon to celebrate a cycle of nature. Hundreds of years ago, the English believed that the spirit of their wheat lived in the last bundle they cut. In each field, they twisted it into the shape of a doll. Since they called, the, called wheat corn, these dolls were nor named corn dollies. They were hung in barns or churches during the winter, then plowed back into the earth in the spring to ensure a good harvest in autumn. People still make corn dollies just for fun. Pilgrims from England arrived in America in the fall of 1620, too late to plant crops. That winter, many died from hunger and sickness. When spring came, the surviving pilgrims sowed wheat seeds. A Native American tribe, the Wampanoags, showed them how to plant maize or corn. The following autumn, the harvest was fruitful. The pilgrims planned a celebration to share this blessing. Wampanoag men hunted and killed five deer to bring to the feast. The pilgrims stayed busy too. Men brought ducks, geese, turkeys, fish, and oysters. Women prepared cornbread and cranberries while children turned meat on spits over an open fire. Games and feasting lasted three days. Bountiful harvests have been celebrated since earliest times. 
people all over the world still celebrate a fruitful year of farming with fun, feasts, and festivals. They enjoy corn, rice, yams, apples, pumpkins, cranberries, and other fruit and vegetables of the harvest season. Autumn, with its brilliant colors and delicious gifts of nature, offers friends and families a time to gather together and give thanks for all their blessings. And that's the end. Yay!